What's going on? My Chenga here. I reviewed a Chromebook a few months ago for the first time in years. I'll link that review in the description. It was a pretty good experience and I was surprised at how well it performed. So I've decided to check out another Chromebook, but this time an AMD Ryzen model. Plus it's a ThinkPad. Today we're going to review the new ThinkPad C13 Yoga Chromebook. All the affiliate links, including updated pricing will be listed below in the video description. We're gonna cover who I think this machine is for, build quality, options you can customize, and of course, performance. First impressions right out of the box, this Abyss Blue looks good and the all metal build feels solid. ThinkPad laptops have always been built to last and I don't feel like this one is any different. The ThinkPad line has been marketed to enterprise users for many years, but of course, consumers like you and I can benefit from a lot of the features and that attention to quality and detail found here. It has a bit of heft to it, weighing 3.3 pounds or 1.5 kilograms, but it doesn't feel heavy or clunky at all. The weight is always something to consider when you're looking at a yoga convertible that you might use in tablet mode. I didn't find it to be an issue at all with the C13. This is meant to be a portable productivity unit and it is. The hinge feels rigid, but it adjusts smoothly when switching between the different convertible modes. I get a lot of questions about durability of the hinge on two in one devices I review. So this one on the C13 appears to be a good one so far. When it comes to specs, there are a variety of ways to customize the C13 Yoga. The processor options range from the AMD Athlon Gold all the way up to a Ryzen 7 CPU. With a starting price of $584, that's good for a ThinkPad. They all have the AMD Radeon graphics built in, and in my opinion, they outperform Intel integrated graphics in a lot of applications. You can choose between four, eight, or 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Just keep in mind, you will not be able to upgrade the RAM in the future, so choose the highest amount you can afford. There are a couple of different storage options. If you opt for one of the budget Athlon Gold models, you can get up to 64 gigs of eMMC memory. It's not the fastest storage on the planet, but if this is a secondary machine for you or you're getting it for work processing or for your student in virtual academy, it will perform just fine. If you decide on a Ryzen 3 or above, you get an NVMe SSD that is swappable. Definitely go for at least the Ryzen 3 if it's within your budget. There's Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 on board, so that's good. Let's take a quick look at the ports. On the left, we get a USB Type-C port that powers the device, but it also provides data and video out. It's not Thunderbolt 3 or 4, but that's expected on these Ryzen powered machines. We get two USB Type-A ports, a headphone microphone combo jack, and a micro SD card slot. Moving to the right, there's the Kensington lock, the second USB Type-C port that is full featured and it will charge the C13, the HDMI port, a volume rocker, and the power button. If you're wondering what this is on both sides of the device, these are the speakers. While they are technically dual stereo speakers, they don't have the best sound quality. Keep in mind that this Chromebook is targeted to users working from home, on-the-go professionals, IT, and even students that want a machine dedicated to their studies. I didn't expect a lot from the two two-watt speakers. They should be adequate for web conferences and listening to lectures, but if you want good audio for entertainment purposes, Plug in your headphones. This is a 13.3 inch 1080p IPS touch display, measuring in right around 300 nits of brightness. It has a 16 by nine aspect ratio, but I definitely would have preferred three by two. It's not the brightest display, but it works well enough inside and the anti-glare coating does a decent job. Colors look good and text looks sharp. If you want the very best display available for this Chromebook, there is a 4K OLED option, but it will come with a premium price tag. This screen does have pin support, but not all models will come with the garage USI pin found here on my review unit. It works well for jotting down notes, signing documents, and marking up web pages. Any applications in Chrome OS that allow pin input will work with this one. It's not the best option for sketching or drawing due to its size, but that's not what this machine would traditionally be used for anyway. I never had to worry about charging the pin since that's taken care of when it's inside the slot. Above the display is the 720p webcam. It does have a physical shutter here for privacy purposes. It's your usual laptop webcam for video conferences. It's not streaming worthy, but it's sufficient. 
The Dolore microphone is again, good enough for conference calls. A lot of laptops and Chromebooks don't have this, but there is a second camera here. This is a five megapixel world facing camera and it has decent quality. Jumping down to the keyboard, it's a true ThinkPad keyboard. It has nice size keys, great key travel, and it's backlit. It felt very familiar to me since I'm a long time ThinkPad user and I have nothing but good things to say about the typing experience. The track point is still here and going strong. For anyone that hasn't tried it out, give it a chance. The buttons here at the very top of the trackpad are there to make using the track point seamless. The trackpad itself, it feels okay. It has a mylar surface, which is like a polyester material. It's not as smooth as glass, but I had no hiccups in responsiveness using it. My review unit has the fingerprint reader here on the palm rest. Not all models will have one since it is optional. It works really well. It gives you a fast and secure way to log in. So let's talk performance. This is the AMD Ryzen 5 model with AMD Radeon graphics and eight gigs of RAM. With day-to-day -day use, including browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, typing up reports, playing a few games from the Google Play Store, everything ran smoothly. We all know that Google Chrome can be a monster when you start opening up tab after tab, but I didn't experience any slowdown running things in Chrome OS. This isn't a Windows machine, so I found it to be a bit more fluid and snappier when opening web pages and switching between apps. Many of the Android games you can play on your phone can be accessed on this Chromebook. You can connect your game controllers and run some emulators if you wanted to. Don't expect to play resource intensive games like Call of Duty Mobile though, it will crash. I recommend streaming games from Google Stadia or GeForce Now for a much better gaming experience. For my Linux users out there, you can install Linux on the C13 and it runs really well. If you wanna learn Linux and do some coding, it won't be an issue here. Depending on what you're doing, the fans will kick in. They aren't what I would call loud, but that's always subjective. The fan noise was tolerable for me. I also didn't have any problems with thermal management or throttling. Lenovo claims all day battery life and I've consistently gotten around nine hours doing a variety of tasks. It's a 51 watt hour battery and it will matter how bright you run a display, but I keep it around 60% brightness when I'm not connected to the power adapter. Mine came with a 65 watt rapid charger and you can get up to 80% in one hour. Overall, I like the ThinkPad C13 Yoga Chromebook. It's a great performer for IT that want to remotely manage employee devices. It's great for students, for professionals working from home that also need flexibility away from the desk. The design is nice and the build quality is ThinkPad quality. The few negatives are the tinny speakers and the price tag once you start customizing it online. We'll just have to see how well it holds up over the next few months. That's it for this one. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you feel like it, jump down in the comment section and let me know you like it. If you haven't already and wanna show your support, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you tap the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I post new content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.